and earn me money. You must earn me money as an RI of my company. That's ridiculous. Howdy team. In today's episode, I'm going to do something controversial because I believe the training in the mortgage industry for new people coming in is horrendous. It's nowhere near as good as it should and as it could be. And I'm going to give you some context as to why this is. I get messages all the time from people on YouTube with a preconception that the mortgage industry is really easy, that they're going to be able to go self-employed within the space of one or two months, that they're going to be able to go directly authorized within the space of a year. I get messages from people all the time saying, oh, I am. Um, He's a, you know, I'm a RI of an AR. I've been given a fact find. I've been given a laptop. I've been shown how to use Trigold. And after five days, I've been shoved out into the big wide world to start giving advice. And earn me money. You must earn me money as an RI of my company. That's ridiculous. It's not good enough. And then I get messages from people saying, oh, Gary, you know, my manager, my, on my team meeting every single week, self-employed advisors, you know, my boss is saying to me, my principal is saying to me, have one protection conversation every single day. You know, just speak to one person. But they're not showing them how. They're not showing how to do the job. And here's my big fear and my big worry. Yes, we're a professional industry. Yes, we are authorized and regulated by the regulator and we have networks and we have ARs, we have directly authorized firms, but this job is bloody hard. We are in the hardest industry that I have ever seen since 2003. It has been harder over the last 18 months during the pandemic than it has ever been with untold waters. Um, you've got furlough, you've obviously got uh, the stamp duty changes. Now, all of these things make the job so much more difficult. And I've seen some of the quality of the questions that come into my mortgage pro community where we have two and a half thousand advisors on Facebook. And it's not through their own fault. It's through the fault of the people that are training them. I'm constantly saying, and I know this is a bit preachy, and in some respects, I do mean it to be because I am insanely passionate about your development and your growth. And I think it's wrong what some people do. And I caveat that as some because not all are as bad as each other. But the quality of the questions that sometimes go into the group from new people starting out, yes, we're there to support. Yes, we're there to help. Yes, I understand that they have these questions. But where the bloody hell is the person in the business that they are trading under? Where is the manager? Where is the principal? Where's the AR? Where's the person who is mentoring them, guiding them and supporting them that they can't pick up their phone and go on WhatsApp or go into a business group where they've got four or five other advisors as part of that business to ask that question that they have to resort to a Facebook group? You know, when I started that Facebook group back in June of 2018, it was because I was a lonely, directly authorized principal. And I wanted to connect with other people in the industry. I went to the London event in February with all the old school boys clubs, suited and booted. Look at me. I'm a financial advisor and a mortgage advisor. I walked in in a polo shirt and jeans and they looked down upon me. So I just resorted to going to Facebook where I had been building my personal brand for two and a half years. That community within the space of a couple of months was six or seven hundred. The age demographic of this industry is coming down. It's bringing a new blood. It's bringing a more inspired and motivated and educated blood. You know, and this is all said with absolute love because I know how hard this industry is. I haven't given advice day in, day out for over 12 months, but I support and coach and mentor my 10 advisors on a weekly session. I'm there to make sure that they are a success because that's the only way that my business can be a success. If their mindset isn't right, if they're not achieving their dreams, then my company doesn't achieve its dreams. So that's why I'm so passionate. And the quality of the questions, the quality of the support, the quality of the guidance is a huge letdown. And I think it's about time that we as 
principals, as leaders, as business owners must do better. You know, my coaching and mentoring started in March 2019 around marketing, around business processes, around systems, around sales. Mostly it was marketing orientated because you saw me doing videos. You saw me producing content. I still, even though I haven't done much mortgage content lately, generate over 100 leads a month because the marketing that I did in 16, 17, 18, 19 has, is assets that are working for me that are still generating leads. Someone's watching a video on YouTube. Someone's downloading a copy of my book. Someone's getting emailed every single week from my email list. Now, that's how you build a business. And that's where some of you have found me and come into my communities. But we need to go back to basics. We need to go back to the key principles of doing this job successfully. And I know I'm direct. I know I'm a bit preachy. But I always speak my truth and I always speak with honesty. And my mission and passion has always been to build this industry from the ground up. From those that have been advising for one or two years that aren't getting the support, the guidance, the coaching, the mentoring that is needed. And I'm not anything special. I left two GCSEs. I left, sorry. <laughs> I left school with two GCSEs. One in woodwork. I got an A star because I made a table that still sits pride of place in the corner of my mum and dad's dining room. Mahogany. It's about yay big. You know, it's like, what, two foot by two foot wide by two foot high. It's a proper good table. Loads of joints. Couldn't do it now, though. Let me be honest. And then I got a C in my business studies GCSE. Failed English, failed maths. And yet I'm a mortgage broker. And yet I'm a best selling author twice on Amazon with a physical and an audio book. I am someone who believes anything is possible when you set out to achieve it. What did I take from school? What did I take from my first few jobs? Now, when I joined the industry, I joined with Woolwich 2003. I was in a classroom for two weeks doing my CMAP examinations. Multiple choice. If that hadn't have been multiple choice, I probably would have failed them. But multiple choice. They're the, still the same exams that you do today. Ridiculous, because it doesn't teach you how to do the job. But those exams, I was then put out into a tiny little branch in the middle of South Wood and Ferris in Essex, where the age demographic does not need a mortgage. But that training was the foundation of this is how you do the job. And I started with one lender, one set of products, I then moved on to Connell's, where again, two weeks worth of training before I was allowed to sit in front of a customer. I had six first appointments observed, six second appointments observed, where you did an hour fact find. You went away, you did your research, you then presented that research properly to the client, mortgage and insurance. The problem with the Connell's, I was at the top of the high street, the car park was at the bottom. And in those days, there was no internet. You had to walk up the high street to see the properties. By the time they'd been in eight high estate agents, I was the last one. They weren't interested in moving, using me. So the lack of leads was the pain. But here's the thing. From there, I went to Alexander Hall, London, still a top brokerage in the UK, two, three weeks before I was allowed to see a client. And when I did start selling, I had a manager up my backside every single day. Who are you speaking to? How's your first appointments? Where are you going? What are you doing? How are you doing it? What's your second appointments? Why haven't you sold protection on that one? Manager meeting or uh, advisor meeting every single day. We had three rows opposite each other. Advisor, advisor, advisor as a team of six. And then at the head of the table was the manager. And on a Friday, every single Friday, you sat uh, downstairs in the main room where we all saw clients. Sat, we stood. Um, and you had to declare your week's worth of sales figures. That environment dictates performance. And then I went to build somebody else's brokerage. You know, I went on to another brokerage. And then in 2005, I built somebody else's brokerage in the space of 11 months, specializing in adverse credit, one trust mortgages from zero to a hundred thousand pound in the space of 11 months. And I was sales and compliance manager. Emma, who joined on day one with me, became uh, operations and admin manager. And Pete, the owner of the business was in the cinema pretty much every single day. And that's when I left and I went self-employed. Now, because of the credit crunch in 2008, I diversified and did insurance for seven years. Now, why was I able in 2016 to generate £250,000 in sales with no bank, with no pipeline, having not really done mortgages for seven years and working with one PA? The reason is that discipline that military environment, the 
understanding from failing forward for 10 years of marketing, process, sales, working out 90-day goals. That meant that I was able to bank from April 16 to April 17, 329,000. Because I was able to understand process, because I was able to understand how to do conversations, prioritize insurance and protection. And you can do this too. I just believe you haven't had the right training. I believe everybody in the insurance industry or in the mortgage industry, should I say, mortgage and insurance industry can take home six figures with one PA in your personal bank. How much would that change your life banking 8,333 pounds and 33 pence every single month? Now, part of the reason why I was able to bank 329,000 and write 250,000 in that 12 month period is because of the lessons that I learned in marketing, because of the use of social media, because of attracting my ideal client. That's always step number one, because without leads, clients, sales, prospects, you don't have a process. But I was able to do the job more efficiently, more effectively in a streamlined manner, having had pretty much seven years out because the industry had not changed. It's still exactly the same principles from 2003 to 2021. And they'll still be the same principles in 2030, 2040, 2050. So here's the thing that you can take away from this and that you can do immediately to change the game for you. You need training, you need coaching, you need mentoring, you need support. But if you understand, number one, your process, how you do the job, in what order, how to have the right conversations, how to objection handle in the process of your first conversation, your first fact find. If you're right at the beginning of the journey, you should be spending an hour with every single client that you speak to. Woolwich, Connells, Alexander Hall, One Trust Mortgages. We spent an hour with every single client as a first appointment. That's how you understand process. That's how you understand case studies. That's how you understand all the different nuances from employed to self-employed to pay slips to bank statements to credit reports to buy to let, remortgage, purchase, limited company, SPV, HMOs, all these different things. You have to spend an hour with the client first. You do that fact find, you come away, you give yourself some time and freedom and you do your research. But you only get good. The only reason I can do a fact find or an initial conversation, not a fact find, an initial conversation in five to 30 minutes, depending on the first time buyer or an experienced landlord, is because of that foundational the principles that I learned. The discipline, the military routine, the habit, the daily habits, and everything. That's what dictates your success. So the first thing is to nail your process. The second thing is to make sure that you have some way of tracking your process. Now, there's loads of free tools that you can use. You know, networks provide you with a system that does your compliance. It makes it for easy for them to check your file and make sure that you have been compliant. It doesn't automate your sales process. It doesn't give you the ability to track communication and conversations directly with the client. It doesn't give you the chance to delegate to an administrator in full confidence that you are able to understand what is going in your business, going on in your business. If you have a fear around delegation, it's because you don't have a process and you don't have a system. These are the key foundational principles because when you have an exact recipe, the ingredients come second from the client, you make a cake every single time. If you understand the recipe, and if you're given the ingredients, which is the conversation with the client, which is the process that you're going to follow, you will be successful 100% and you will take home six figures every single year. The third thing, which is something that I didn't do early on, I only started investing in myself in 2016. You have to invest in yourself. I don't, I didn't realize, but you know, when I was, when I was, when I was at school, I was privately educated, very, very fortunate. I was the thick kid in class. 
you know, but I was privately educated. My brothers and sisters are 12 and 17 and 18 years older than me. I was an only child at home. Now, you might say that I was, I had a silver spoon in my mouth to a degree, but my parents went through massive hard times from when I was six till 16. And I didn't realize at the time, but they worked hard to keep me in private education. As it happens, when I was three or four years old, the only school that was nearby was a private school. And that was the only nursery that I could go to. So it was natural progression to go into the school and be, being an only child, you know, so to speak. My parents wanted to keep me in that private education. But I took discipline from school, habits and routines, even though I only got two GCSEs. That discipline then came into the work environment that I was in. So I had a foundational mindset from sport as well that realistically is always going to make you successful because it's a can do attitude. It's a never give up attitude. It's a get knocked down, get back up, never give up kind of mindset and attitude on the days where the back, where it's going bad, you realize that tomorrow is a new day and you go again. When a lender turns around and says, no, your offer falls out of bed. The valuation comes back. Shit. You dust yourself off. You go after the next deal and the next deal and the next deal and the next deal. If you wallow in self-pity and you worry, worry about things that are outside of your control, you get depressed, you get stressed out, you get worried, you get frustrated, you take on more. You have to focus on what you can control to be successful in this industry. You have to focus on your process, your system, the conversations you're having, your mindset, and you might mean that you need to invest in yourself to understand how to do this job day in, day out, to the best of your ability, at the rate of knots. Now, everybody works at a different pace. You can see how passionate I'm getting. You can hear how passionate I'm getting. I'm naturally 100 miles an hour, and you may not be, and that's absolutely fine. But if your process in your system can get you to 60, 70, 80 miles an hour because it's streamlined, efficient, automated, you can delegate with confidence, you'll live a better life. You'll have more time to do the things that you love with who you love. You won't be as stressed out by things that are outside of your control. You'll have more freedom, more autonomy. You'll enjoy the job, the, print, the, the role much, much more. You have to prioritize the insurance conversation. You have to sell a broker fee. You have to be able to sell yourself if you want to make 250000 in a year. If you want to bank 300 grand plus a year with one PA. It is 100% possible to do if you get the foundational principles right. If you understand how to structure your day, your process, your systems, and you recruit some people. Now, I hope this has inspired you. I would love to know if it's had what if it's had an impact on you, what your thoughts are around on the training that you've had from when you first started out to, you know, now being in the position that you are, where are you lacking? Where do you need help? Where do you need guidance? If you could learn one thing in the next 30 days that would change the game for you, what is it? Send me a message, send me a DM, hit me up on Instagram, Just put a comment in below. Let me know because that's how I can help you because I can produce content that's specific to you. My mission and my purpose and my passion now is to make sure that I develop your skills to increase your income. As mortgage advisors, insurance advisors, to make sure that you live a life that you love, that you can spend more time doing the things that you love with who you love. And to make sure that if your company is not giving you the support, that you've got the support you need to be a success in this industry. As long as you're willing to put the work in yourself, as long as you're willing to engage with me, ask questions of me, reach out to me, then I'm more than happy to help you. Like me, I'm sure you want to provide as much as you can for your family. They're your reason why. So let's do this together. Let's grow. Let's be successful. And let's transform the financial services industry, the mortgage and insurance industry from the ground up. Stop relying on your network. Stop relying on your principal. Take control yourself today. Thanks very much indeed for listening in. Thanks for tuning in. Remember, now's the time to become pro.